Okay. Cool, yeah, Jamie Ike, youngest son of David Ike, author and speaker. And we just happened to meet here at your father's conference. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, Well, it's great to meet up with you. A lot of people may not know your story, and I just wanted to find out more about you and how it influenced you and your thoughts and beliefs and stuff like that. So, Well, I was born in 1992, which was after David had just about started this journey. We came on in 1991, so I grew up with... I guess quite a different way to most people would. When most people in this sort of field, that when they become awake, it's because they've been through the system up until they become awake. Because I sort of started with that mentality of always questioning everything and always wanting to know the truth about things. And my teachers at school didn't like me because I always used to ask questions like, why do you know that? It's particularly in history lessons, how do you know any of what you just said is true? When you're talking about the royals and talk about, you know, the Tudors and stuff like that, really ancient things. It's like, how do you know any of that is true? You're just reading what you've been told. Right, and um, so I always found it. I've always found it absolutely fascinating. And in the last probably three years, I've got a lot more involved in the business side of it. I now run the businesses and the bookshop and organise events. It has become quite a business, I guess. Um, but it's it's a good business because it's doing a lot of good, waking up more people. Well, the um, kind of thing it has to it had to be it, it had to be because you know it's all very it's all it's all very well and good wanting to to literally only focus on the information, which is. I guess because of what, what me and my team do, that allows David to just do that. He doesn't have to worry about anything else because he knows it's all taken care of, which is great because it allows him to focus for purely on the information. And, uh, and that's why he's able to talk for 12 hours because he's right. just researching 24-7. I, I got some burning questions I gotta ask you. Okay. There's a lot of things that I agree with your dad about and a lot of things I don't agree with him. Okay. Um, I'm more fact-based on a lot of things, but I do believe in the spirituality and connection of atoms. I, that's obvious. That's, and that's provable. We're all connected. Yep. There's no doubt. Um, but when it comes to certain things, like um, some people have made rumors that your dad believes in the flat earth theory. Okay, right. So how do you I, want to address I'm not asking you to address it for him. No, no, of course not. Unless he, you know. He's not researched that in depth. But um, I think if he, had to put, if he had to sort of nail his color to the mask, he'd say it was actually a, a sphere. Okay. Um, we had a brief conversation about this on the flight over, actually, at sort of 30,000 feet. You can, you can see a, a curvature. And I know there's a lot, of, a lot of very good research out there in the flat earth theory, but he's not gone into it in, in any depth yet, and neither have I. Good. I, I'm not a staunch you know, researcher on the flat earth. I just know it's not true, and it's you know, the satellites and stuff like that. Yeah. For me, it's not true. But that may not be true for other people, but for me, it's not. And a lot of people have said, oh, I'm not listening to David Icke anymore because he believes in flat earth. He's never said he does. He's never said anything like that. He okay. Just, well, what so he does the record straight there. Yeah, I mean, what he does with information is he puts things on, back, on the back burner. And if there's not enough evidence to support a hypothesis either way, he won't come out. Like a lot of researchers will do and come out and say, this is what I think. This is what I know. And then five years later, you're proved wrong because of better research. Right. So what he'll do is unless, unless there's a, a real, real confirmation or something, um, he doesn't generally go with it. He'll, he'll put it on the back burner and let it see what happens with it. Uh, are there any? I don't really know if, of any other controversial things that a lot of people are like. Oh, I don't like David Icke because. And if you fill that well, in, the well, the reptilians has got to be the biggest one. Oh yeah, it's most, sure. It's the most out there theory. Well, I think when for me when I hear the reptilians, I think of blue blood, and that's a fact that it goes back into history. If you look at RBH negative, is it, which is the yeah. alien blood, the first blood. Um, or maybe it's less blood, but if you look at the history there again, there's a lot of proof of that. We, but is he talking about shapeshifters? Yeah, I mean, if when you look at, if you talk about shapeshifting, you talk about the world being solid, he'll say the first person that will agree with you that shapeshifting is not possible is him, because it's not. A solid thing can't turn to a solid thing. But when you're talking about the world being a vibration, the world being energetic, then all it is is a different information field, swiftly. It's not a case of two solid things changing, which is not possible, really. You won't. You wouldn't say it was possible. Right. But he's not saying that, and that's a lot of what a lot of what, particularly the mainstream media and the one-liners don't get, is that he's not saying that. What he's saying is the nature of reality is completely different to what we think it is, and therefore that is possible because of that. I think that's the most out there theory he's got. But then every theory is out there till it's proven. You look at people like Leonardo da Vinci that were absolutely abused for what they knew, and years later we call them pioneers because they were way ahead of their time. That's all. Everything is controversial and. Uh, you're a maverick until what you say is proven. 
So there's so many things that tie into energy and vibration and frequency that people don't understand. People don't, you don't, you don't are hear. You, are these subjects that you like about what your dad does? Yeah, I mean that the fascinates me. Right. Yeah, that fascinates me particularly the, the nature of reality and things like that because you, you say to someone the world's a vibration, the world's all the world is energy. It's everything is vibrating. There's no and, doubt about and, that. And it's provable. Well, so a lot of people will disagree with you, but then you turn around. Right, okay. You walk it's in, physics. Every atom is vibrating. So there you go. That's that's all you need to know about vibration. Absolutely. You walk into a room and there's been an argument, you can tell because the energy in the room, there's a tension in the room, which shows that everything has a vibration. You walk into a room that's very positive, very happy, you can feel that. You know, you only get people around you that are very positive, it's infectious, you can feel that energy rubbing off on you. If you're around very down, depressive, dour people, it rubs off on you again. The aura, so to Yeah, that's the energy. That aura is just another word for the energy that comes off someone. And do you really think that the energy doesn't just exist in the, in the atmosphere, it's not, it doesn't just come off of us. Right. And the fact that if you look at the electromagnetic spectrum of what, what visible light is, which is like a tiny, tiny fraction, 0, 0.0 whatever, so 99.9 whatever percent, you can't see. Right. You can't, we can't see. So there's so much stuff in this room we're in now that we can't absolutely. see. So you say that and all of a sudden absolutely anything becomes possible. So do you think it's possible that, well not possible, but it's definitely that they're taking certain aspects of his theories and then blowing them out of the proportion yeah, what to they make do him is, paint him into a guy that's just a Looney Tune. Yeah, that's what they do. They, right. they give you the one-liner because, I mean, there's no, it's no accident, and it's no, it's not for just the sake of it that this event is is ten hours today, and the fact that the very out there theories come in about five hours in, because everything that's gone before is a backstory, and if you look at take the reptilian theory for example, that's not just him that's saying that. If you look back through history. There's been so many, um, so many teachings, so many findings, so many um, people talking about things like this. You can go back to all the ancient tribes all over the world, Native American tribe, Aboriginal tribes in Australia, Native Europeans. They all tell the same stories from different parts of the world. Absolutely. There's got to be a common theme there. There is a theme. All I do believe it because if you look at all the the different uh, tribes that were back then, you know, in the ancient yeah. times. They have a lot of similarities, but they were separated by seas. Absolutely. That there's no way that they knew about this, but there was something that was connecting them. Absolutely. We, we met an Aboriginal tribe in a place called Margaret River in Western Australia about probably two months ago. And uh, what, they, what they were saying, a lot of what they were saying, had come straight out of um, David's latest book. And it's just fascinating to see two people, totally different eras, totally different parts of the world, coming from a completely different source of that knowledge. David's obviously done a lot of research. The, the knowledge that these Aboriginal and Indigenous people would have had would have been passed on and passed on through right. through their generations. And they're basically saying the same thing. Right. And it's incredible. It was absolutely, it was a massive eye-open for me. It's the first time I'd ever travelled with David. So, my battery's almost dead. Okay. I've, I'm sorry about that. No problem. But um, I still want to ask you more about you and okay. the son of David Ike. Cool. I mean, your father it has a lot of popularity. He your does, tour, yeah. His tour is going on. So you're basically here to support and help him in any way I guess he needs? Well, I'm the tour organiser, so I organise the shows and basically make sure he's looked after. Um, so that's, that's basically my job at the moment and I run the bookshops and merchandise and basically, just basically make sure everything runs smoothly so he doesn't have to worry and he can just get on with the, get on with the job, I guess. And, right. Because uh, it's obviously 12 hours takes a lot, of, a lot of energy out of you and the less he has to worry about, the better for him. I know you're helping with this, but where do you see yourself going in the future? I want to, I want to be a, a writer and a communicator as well. Um, I do feel that, um, and me and David have, I guess, had this conversation. That I feel that one day there might be a passing of the baton. You say David, you mean your dad? Yeah, there might be a passing of the baton. Are you a stepson or something? That no, no. I, don't, I always call him David in interviews <laughs> just because rather than saying dad, just people know who you mean, I guess. Um, I, I think there'll be a passing of the baton, I hope, and I'd like to to communicate and write myself. I feel there's a lot of young people, particularly in Europe uh, and Australia, not noticed it too much in America, but we've only been here a week. Who designed the t-shirt? Um, that was a clothing company we've got on the Isle of Wight. Yeah, it's quite was cool. It an artist, any particular artist? No, well, we, we basically uh, came up with a picture and told them exactly what we wanted and they just made it into a Yeah, print. it's great. Yeah, they're <coughs> both terrible, but isn't that the case <laughs> with everything these days? Uh, and people are eating them up, like, oh, I really yeah. hate this person, but there's so much tribalism. Well, if you We're look not going to get into that. But, if you uh, look at the votes, America voted for Bernie Sanders, didn't they? 
It's horrible. But they, they rigged it. They rigged yeah. it so she got the nomination. Everyone voted for Sanders. Right. And you're in a position where you got the... Well, I didn't want Sanders either. I to be. I <coughs> no, again, a lot of people... Socialism, go look at Venezuela or Brazil or whatever. You know, this is a socialist uh, system in working, 900% interest. No way, no thanks. Yeah. But, but people like uh, Cynthia McKinley, I think she's brilliant. Judge Andrew Napolitano, those are people that get the problems of this country, but yeah. they're never seeming to come up for vote. But anyway, I don't want to lecture <laughs> about what I think. It's more about you. But um, is there anything else you want to add uh, about how, how many days are you on tour? Um, we got into America on the 3rd of September and we go back to the UK on the 28th. So just over three weeks, three shows, a bit of traveling in between. Very cool. So um, this is just the beginning of it. Yeah, we've done seven dates so far this year. This is the eighth one. We've got seven more after this. Is this your first time to New York now? Yep, first time to really? America. For me, yeah. For cool. David's well, been here four or five times. There's a lot of ugly places, but a lot of beautiful <laughs> places. Don't forget, America is a very large country. Well, it's like a series of countries, isn't it? The West Coast, I imagine yeah, California it, it is totally is. different. It really is. And, you know, that's what's so great about it. It's the ugly with the beauty and yeah. it's everything in between. So, See, New York's great. It's just... Um, I live in a, on an island where it's very quiet, so it's very crowded. But, right, right. Uh, I love New York. New York's great. I've really enjoyed this week here. Looking forward to going to the West Coast and seeing Los Angeles and oh, San yeah. Francisco. We're going to have a good time, I'm sure. Um, all right, that's it. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you. No problem at all. Thank you. Okay. That was cool.